Uh, let's start with the word. Extirpate. extirpate that C++ ignorance. I'm feeling off my game today. All right. So <clears throat> I trust that you all have dutifully gone through the project materials, not very many of them. Uh, for the stragglers, please whisper in their ear, extirpate and let them know that it's the word of the day and not some sort of social engagement you're asking for. So today we're going to start talking about this first project. <clears throat> to uh, provide a little bit of context, the project is projects generally uh, are structured differently from the assignments and that some effort has been made to make them authentic. And what I mean by that is I'm trying to uh, have us start to on the projects go through the same process that you would go through in uh, real life if you were dealing with a, a project at work or your own or whatever. Now this particular project, we're just taking baby steps, so it's relatively trivial. Uh, but you can see that I've kind of dummied up an email and some coding standards. And uh, as we get, particularly the second project is a little bit more involved. It, it has more materials than this does. And the idea here is that <clears throat> the inf information isn't necessarily all there, or it may be conflicting or a little bit vague or ambiguous. And so not only do we need to code up the project, but we need to uh, go through a process to understand what the problem is that we're solving. So to a great extent, once you're fluent programmers, the easiest part of being a software engineer is doing the coding. What is a lot more difficult is dealing with the ambiguity that you have to deal with all the time in the job. So trying to give you a sense of that with these projects. Uh, this one is definitely a set of baby steps. It is almost all the way laid out there for you. <clears throat> this uh, second, so that's what the, that email is, is an effort to begin uh, giving you things in a more realistic context. The second item are the coding standards. And it's uh, very much the norm these days in whatever organization you decide to work for that there be a set of coding standards. And there are lots available on the web of actual coding standards. You can go ahead and Google it and you'll find dozens and dozens in all sorts of programming languages. And they vary any, they, what they basically do is they, uh, create some sort of consistency in the code that is created amongst developers. Some of it is style. So I'll pull a, a, I'll pull a fictitious one that probably is not a coding standard anywhere. We, we know that uh, for comments we can do the star, the slash star, and the star slash. And maybe uh, you come across some company that has a coding standard that is you will never use the C++ style comment. We want uh, everything to be in this old, excuse me, there will be nothing in the C++ style. We want everything to be in kind of the old C style commenting structure. So you can see that there's nothing syntactically compelling about that, that it's very much a preference 
of whoever it is that developed the standard and, and whoever, whatever the company is that adopted the standard. What it does do is it creates a consistency among all of the code that the developers are looking at because you're, it's very rare that you are just simply going to be writing your own code day after day. It's going to be more uh, typical that you're going to have to maintain someone else's code or you're going to have to extend an application which was developed by someone else. And if they're following a set of standards, at least what you look at will be familiar and it'll just speed up your um, productivity. So again, that's just a fictitious one coding standard you probably never see that I throw out by way of example. Uh, some of them are best practices, so there may be two or three ways of doing things and that'll force one particular way on you. Um, things of that sort. So that, that's the nature of, of these items here. Now regarding getting back to the email then and uh, Focusing in, let, let's actually start at the bottom of it, or near the bottom, near the bottom of, of Patty's email. And Patty uh, has her propaganda going there, and she says, and don't forget the computer worker slogan, abstraction and encapsulation are the cornerstone of good code. And actually, let me pause here and back up. So the First question is if you all know what, I think this is beginning to get a little dated. Um, a page counter tool. So what is a page counter tool? You don't see it so much nowadays, but in the wild west days of the web, uh, there's a little bit of, of bragging rights to be able to say, look at all the people that have visited my web page. Don't I put together a web page that's quite informative and fascinating, what with the blinky fonts and the little hamster doing this thing and, and stuff like that. If you look at the bottom right-hand corner of my page, I have a little number there, and it shows that over 15,000 people have visited this site since February. And if you go to the page again, then that number should have increased by one, right? So that, that's what a page counter is referring to. It's just referring to that stupid idiot counter there that you see on the bottom of web pages. At least you did. Don't seem so much anymore. Um, so the, the context of this is that you are being recruited not to write a web application but to write a simple tool that the main application developers will use. And this tool will be a web counter. So you'll get done and in code you'll have this thing that serves as a web counter. Okay. Uh, now getting back to what Patty finished with, abstraction and encapsulation. Let's talk about those things. Let's, let, let's talk about abstraction right now and then we'll talk about encapsulation a little bit later. So abstraction. Uh, describing something in terms of how it is used. <clears throat> uh, so, for example, setting this aside for a moment, I can I can describe a car in terms of an abstraction. So, what are things that you do with a car? You paint a car, you pull the seats apart to find coins that you've lost, and things like that, right? Are those not the things that you do with cars? Okay, that's describing something in terms of how I use it. So in the context of this, uh, what are the kinds of things that we do with a web counter? Well, you count, yeah. What are the things you do with it? based on this email here. Set, the value. Set it. <clears throat> what else? Get the value of it. <clears throat> Reset the value of it. Increase the value <coughs> of it, of the web counter. Oops. Uh, yeah. 
We have just described a web counter in the context in terms of how we use it. That is, we've just described the web counter abstraction. Okay? We can uh, provide a little bit more information here. Uh, actually, let, let's wait on that. So I want to make this a little bit more real. Why is that doing that? I'm going to call this abstract web counter abstraction dot text. Web counter, all right, I got it. There we go. Just trying to get this thing to. I need, I think what I want to do is, I think I want two volunteers to act as web counters. All right. Front and center. Any other side web counters? Anyone else want to be web counter? All right, good, good. <coughs> Uh, this isn't a relevant part of the instruction. I just like to make people uncomfortable. Uh, okay, so I didn't know I looked so good. Stand, stand a little closer over here. All right. So may I have your names? Luke. Luke, Lottie, L-O-T-T-I-E, Lottie, L -O -T -T -I -E. Luke and Lottie. Okay, so these are my two web counters. Now I, I've described them in terms of what we do with them, so let me go ahead and use my web counters. Uh, what I, I think I want it to do, let's see what we got here. Let me bring this up. All right, so those are the only four things I can do with my web counters, unless you, you come up with more of them. Um, so set, get, reset, increase. Uh, what, what terminology was being used for in, in increasing the web counter? Hit. Hit. All right, so let, let me, whoa. Let me, uh, I'll say hit. Um, so, what I want to do first is I want to reset these two, okay? So, Luke, reset. Lottie, reset. Thank you. You don't have to make... <laughs> is, that, is that a heart? It's a, it was supposed to be a zero. Oh, I, 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 thought, I thought... I was right. automatically doing a heart, but okay. it's supposed to be a zero. Okay, I, I like the heart. Um, <laughs> Luke, hit. Luke, hit. Luke, get. And when I add, when I say Luke get, what should Luke be doing? Huh? Giving you the number. Giving me the number? Yeah. And what number? What number would you be? Anyone want to help out our, our buggy web counters here? Zero. Well, let's start. Let's start all over again. All right. <laughs> all right. You're a web counter. There are four things I can do to you. First, I'm going to say reset, reset. If I at reset my counters, what am I actually doing? Setting them to zero. Okay. And when I say hit, what am I doing? Adding one. Hit, hit, and then get. I don't know what you want me to give you. <laughs> give. So you, what you can do is you can just actually say out loud. Two. two you can use your two. use your projectile words. All right, two. All right. Okay. Hit, hit. Hit, 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 get. Four. Okay. Good. Impressive, huh? <laughs> We're programming only so easy. Um, but what I, I should be, so I, I'm actually being a little bit ambiguous. I should be more clear, since I have two web counters up here, I should be saying Luke hit, Luke hit, Lottie hit. So I should specify who it is I'm talking to, right? Uh, so let me say Lottie reset, Luke reset. Um, 
What have I not done yet? How about set? OK. Uh, Lottie, set 3,000. Uh, Luke, hit. Lottie, get. 3,000. Luke, One. get. Look at that, even before I finish calling. Um, That's my <clears throat> Okay, now there's something happening here which we're taking for granted, and that is they're they're storing something up in their head. Yeah, they're storing that that number for the number of hits. I don't want to uh, I want to don't want to make that uh, implied anymore. I want to make it explicit. So from now on, rather than keeping that information in your head, I want you to write it on the board. And you got a collection of pens all over the place to choose from. Make it nice and big. Those are a lot. Draw, draw yours big and a little bit closer to Luke's there. Yeah, now it's fading fast. There. All right. Now, uh, so Lottie hit. Okay. Uh, let's do a little bit of a curveball. Luke set negative five. All right. So that seems straightforward enough, but now let's back up. These. These are playing, these wonderful folks here, are playing the part of web counters, right? There's a context to this. So a web counter, again, is, is indicating how many people have visited a particular web page. And it's impossible to visit a web page negative five times. So what should we do if I ask Luke or Lottie to set to negative five? What should they do instead? Yeah, I, I, I like that idea. So, so they're going to do a little mental check, right? They're going to say, if um, I'm given a negative number, then I'm actually going to just make it zero, and I'm going to write on the board zero instead of what I said. So let, let's reboot that. So I say, uh, Luke, negative five, and then zero is what is put down. All right? Now, this bring, this bring uh, that little thing there is just a, a teeny tiny bit of what I'm trying to capture in terms of ambiguity. So again, this is a very small project, very trivial. But it ex it's an exemplar of something that doesn't exist in this write-up, right? The, so you get to figuring out what the problem is. You're trying to design a solution, and you go, oh, wait a minute. It's impossible for a web page to have a negative number. What should I do in this case? Now, we resolved it amongst ourselves. And depending on the scale of the problem, you might be able, as a developer, to resolve it. But more frequently, what you're going to have to do is go to the other people on, who are uh, part of the project to figure out what the problem is, or, or excuse me, how to resolve that issue. So you'll go to maybe the web developers, or maybe you go to Patty and you say, look, we got this issue. We don't know what to do. If we get negative 5, how should we resolve it? They call together a meeting and you figure out how to do it. Okay, that is the kind of stuff that's going to make up the bulk of your day if you're a software engineer, dealing with these kinds of ambiguities. All right? So this is what I'm getting at with once you're a fluent programmer, coding's the easy part. It's figuring out what the hell the problem is that's the hard part. All right. Um, so I, I, think, I think we've got a, a good idea uh, based on that. So thank you. I appreciate you volunteering. Yeah. You, should, you should feel really good about that. They didn't clap for the folks last semester. So uh, that's just how much better your performance was. All right. Let's, re let's provide a little bit more information for these abstractions. So when I say set the value of it, What did I have to do when I said set? I not only said set, what else did I do? I provided a number, right? So provide a number. 
when I get the value of it, I was given a number, right? Um, the I how about this? I must provide a number. I am given back a number. Do I have to provide any information when I sit when I want to reset? Am I given back any information? No. Okay. Uh, and what about hit? Same thing, right? I, they don't give me any information back, and I don't provide them any information. I just simply say hit, and everything works, and I'm not giving anything back, all right? So this is, this is our, our web counter abstraction. Now let's talk about encapsulation. Uh, there are two aspects to encapsulation. We'll get to two in a little bit. The first uh, characteristic of encapsulation is it's bundling together in the same capsule the behavior of, uh, let me see, let, let me come up with the right words. Um, the information slash data with the functions that operate on the information slash data. So encapsulation is getting a little bit closer to code when we talk about this. Um, did, did Luke and Lottie have any information or data? Yeah, and that was? That was the current count, right? The information they had written up on the board here? <clears throat> okay. Uh, so that's, that's what encapsulate the first uh, idea of encapsulation is. You're bundling together this stuff with, in, in our example, with that, that number. Okay? And that happened implicitly. You see, that, that's the thing that, that is uh, weird is it gets really confusing when we bring all this to code, but it's all this simple. You all knew it so well, you didn't even think twice when they were keeping 3,000 in their head. And then when they wrote it up on the board, you're going, yeah, yeah, go on, go on. I got it. I got it. They got the number, Todd. Just go on, right? Stop wasting my time. Holy smokes, it should be a 25-minute class with all the extra fluff you're throwing at us. Don't even have dry erase erasers, making them use their hands. All right. Um, what the hell am I talking about? Um, <laughs> let me see. Get back. It. All right. So <clears throat> that's what it means. They're, they do have information or data, and the, these behaviors are being bundled in the same capsule. They are up there together. They are not separate. There's no way to separate them. That's the idea. The second is... Uh, the data may not be accessed directly. <clears throat> you may only access, now use the word access. Uh, let me, I've been using the word use, so let me say access slash use. You may only access use the capsule through its behaviors, uh, functions. <clears throat> so that means that the only thing that I can do with, did you have a question? Oh, thanks. All right. Um,
Right, so the only thing that I was allowed to do with Luke and Lottie are those four things. Now there's implicitly, there's a fifth thing here, and I'll put that in braces since for the moment uh, this is implied. I was unable to actually use Luke and Lottie until I had them come up here. So that's synonymous with creating them, if you will. Okay, and, the, and, and um, this all ties back to C++, so let me give you a C++ example. If I write this line of C++ code, C out X, that won't, that won't work because the compiler will say, I don't, I don't, what are you talking about? I don't know what X is, right? So before I'm allowed to use X, I have to create it. The same idea here. Before I can use a web counter, I have to create one of them. So I had to bring Lottie and Luke up here in order to use uh, these behaviors here. Uh, so this is kind of a special behavior, so I'll, I'll throw it up there. We'll see it more a little bit later, but not right now. Uh, let's see. I don't think we see it. No, we don't see it in Project 1. All right. So to phrase this another way, if Luke was standing up here and I tried to reach past Luke to change that number on the board, what Luke should be doing is slapping my hand down because I'm not allowed to access anything except the through, I'm not allowed to interact with Luke except through these four behaviors. Got it? So if I try to take that number on the board and change it myself, no, 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 no. I'm not allowed to. That's what the second part of encapsulations is getting at. Yes? So am I going to my last and cut my new All right. <clears throat> uh, so, so stepping out for just a moment. In lab today, I dealt more with the specifics of classes. So those in the Tuesday, Thursday will get more of that uh, tomorrow. One of the things I didn't have time to talk about, although you may have read it, about it or known about it, uh, despite the fact I haven't talked about it, is things are divided into uh, public areas and private areas. They're actual keywords in the language. And that is exactly what those are doing, is they are allowing you to create this idea of encapsulation. Things that people around the, in the world, if you will, that I'm allowed to do will be in the public area. Things that I'm not allowed to touch are in the private area. That's exactly what those represent. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions to this point? Yes? In the context of our assignment or project, um, is the date public or private? In this project? Um, the only, the only it, so that as far as what you need to do in the project, it is in the write up in the email, you have to provide a test program. So, what that would be is essentially what I did up here with Luke and Lottie, which means I, I quote unquote created them. And then I ran them through their different behaviors. I hit, I reset, I set, I tried setting to a negative number, uh, and then I got those values periodically to see what they were. That would be me, that's me being the test program to see that my web counter works the way I think it should. Uh, but that's all you have to do. Regarding date, you will have noticed that there's stuff about date in the coding standards. So the date there is just being provided as an example for the standard, and there's no expectation. The, the, the coding standards aren't tied to the project as far as the examples you see there. Uh, it's just like yeah, it's like if you... Um, it's just, yeah, I don't, I, it's just an example, right? <coughs> And it doesn't have anything to do with the project. So these same coding standards could be used for any project from our web counter to some 100,000 line project. It's all generic. The standards are meant to be generic. Other questions? All right. Um, yes? For the sake of the program I was writing, what are you going to put in So let's 
So what would you do as far as the program? Okay, th so there are going to be two parts to the program. So let's go to uh, program requirements.txt. How about that? One, you're going to have to write a class, a, a C++ class, named probably something like web counter. Uh, what does it mean to write a class? You have to write a class declaration. That is uh, the public functions and private data. Again, for those who are in the Tuesday, Thursday sequence, you'll get more of uh, that then. You have to write the class definition. That is, that is, uh, write each member function. How many member functions are there? And the web counter four. Yeah, so you have to you have to write these four functions. <clears throat> write a test program to take your <clears throat> web counter through its paces. Call a bunch of different functions. Make sure they're all working. Uh, get the value and print it out. <clears throat> Try setting it to a negative number, then get the value again and see if it's a zero, the way you meant it to be. One one thing that uh, that gets lost but is happening here is that. Neither Luke nor Lottie, in coding context, there's no see out statement, no see in statement in any of their code. If I say set, I give them a number and they set their web counter. If I say reset, they turn around and change their number to zero. If I say hit, they add one to their number. Um, if I say get, they don't put it to see out. They return it to me, and it's up to me to do something with that number. Okay. Now, you, you should hopefully be seeing a parallel here between these four things and functions generally. They all have a name. So I, I'm always do, doing stuff like this. I say uh, float func, right? Okay. What qualities does every function have? This is what the function gives back. So in, uh, this is the name of the function. So we already have the names. So this one's called set. This is called get. This is called reset. This is called hit. So we got that part. Uh, what about what goes in the parentheses? These are the parameters, the things that we provide to the function in order for it to do its job. Which of these functions do we have to provide information for it to do its job? I must provide a number, right? So there you can see, hey, let's go ahead and do it. It's going to be called hit, or no, excuse me, set. I have to give it a number. And is that number going to be an integer? Yeah. Uh, what is it that? What do they give back? So when I turned around and I said, uh, "Lottie set 3,000," what did Lottie give back to me in return? Silence. Silence. Right? She she literally turned her back on me. Now it was to write on the board, but she turned her back on me. <laughs> All right. She didn't give me anything back. Okay. So uh, I would put void here. Yes. Is there any, are there any of these functions where Lottie would give me something back? Get. Get. Yeah. And what kind of thing does Lottie give back to me? <laughs> an, integer. an integer. And what is the name of the function where I get an integer? Get. get. And what information do I have to provide in order to get that number back? 
nothing. So you can either do it like this or you can use the word void. It means the same thing, yeah? No, I'll, I'll, I've been usually leaving it just blank, so I'll just leave it blank. All right? Hmm? It is a function. Right there. I mean, this, I, I've only, these are just declarations, yeah? So these aren't the entire functions, just the declarations. Where you would find these would be inside the class declaration. Let me actually bring this back over here. So write a class declaration. These two, for example, That's part of it. Here's part of it. Um, I'm even. Let's even write a tiny bit. Of, uh, let's write a, a little bit more of that declaration. So this is web counter. Uh, actually, let me. Let's call this. Uh, no, let's call it code.cpp. Oops. Web counter. This is stuff we'll be dealing with in lab. Uh, I want to borrow, let's just borrow one of these. How about this one? There it is. This project's easy. I'm writing it for you. All right. Um, so, what is the information? that is private, that I'm not allowed to access directly when, it, when using a web counter? Right. So when they're writing on the board, that's what they're writing. They're writing the number of hits, yeah? And that number is an integer, yes? That's private because I get my hand slapped away if I reach for it, try to erase it, change it. So I can actually write this function. What should I'll have down here main I'm going to create a web counter Let's focus on um, Let's ignore up above there for a moment and just focus on this part. This is me. I was main in the little role play there. So I invited Luke up. There I am inviting Luke up on stage. Uh, what was the first thing I did with Luke? I set it to zero. So I could do a set to zero or I could uh, the other. I think what I actually did was reset. Yeah. Uh, so after I do reset, Luke's web counter should be set to zero. We can test that, and this is how I would test it. Is that too low? Can everyone see that all right? So what should be, in, in a programming context, what should spit out to the screen? Zero. And then what I did, and this gets to, what are we doing here, get? Well, that, that's good enough, just that stuff. Um, so this is my whole dialogue with Luke and Lottie consisted of something like what you see in main. I create Luke, I create Lottie, a bunch of resets, gets, hits, and so forth. Yes? Okay. Getting back to what you're expected to do, the 
you're asked to write the web counter class, and then you are asked to write a test program. And this, this here's the test program. So the idea is that you're not, again, you're not writing a web application. What you're doing is you're being brought in to help the coders who are a little bit overwhelmed with the work they have. And you're, this stuff that I have highlighted when it's all done is what will the coders will use. The stuff in main, what the coders will do is they'll throw that in the trash can. They don't care about your test program except to make sure your code is not buggy. But they're going to take your web counter class and they're going to use it in their 500,000 line web application. Where, and what they'll do is whenever they create a web page, they'll create a web counter object and so on and so forth. Okay, so that's the idea here. One of the one of the things that uh, oh let me get here we haven't finished this I'm I'm happy to work with this so what should um, what should this let me get a little bit higher what should this line of code do It's going to give back a number, yes, just like we saw up here on stage, return, and they would give me this. They would look over their shoulder to see what was in this, what was written on the board, and they would parrot it back to me. That's what that is. Find okay. into this. Here's where people get confused. They, you, you see this happening. It makes intuitive sense. These people are standing up here. They own that part of the board, or it's in their head, or whatever, and you're going, yeah, I get it. It's all bundled together. All Todd can do are these four things with these people. But then you get to writing a function like this, and you do something like uh, int number uh, num hits, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to return num hits. What is going on there? All right? That's a whole lot of weird right there. The, the equivalent of what I'm describing here is, imagine the, actually, come up, let's just do it real quick. Stand right there. I, I, no, I don't need both of you. We'll just grab one, just real quickly. All right? Um, okay, I'm writing 45 on this piece of paper. Watch this. Get. Did that, if I wanted to know how many hits there have been, did that make a lot of sense, me handing him a 45? No, that was silly, wasn't it? Okay, that's what I just wrote there, right here. Don't, don't be doing that. Right? And, and so now he's looking at it and saying, I, I, I thought you wanted what's on the board. Why'd you give me this 45? That's what this is doing. So people understand intuitively, but when it gets to the code, it gets really hard to understand that when you create a web counter, one of these is built into it. Right? When I created Luke, invited Luke up here, Luke has number of hits. I don't have to give him number of hits. If I say, give me number of hits, by golly, that's all I have to do. And, and he'll reach back and give me the number of hits. Yes? So, okay, thank you. in order to test the number of hits, you don't need to see the right uh, If you want to test number of hits, you don't use CN. Well, uh, it's not necessary, okay? So you just need to test the four functions to make sure they work. And I can test them all right here. Note, I don't need any input to do that. If I want to test out set, I can say Luke set, and I can make sure it got set to 3,000. And then I can do this to see what it, if it is 3,000. And then I can try throwing Luke for a loop and pass in negative 5. And I can then print it out again and see if it is negative 5 or if it's 0, which is what it should be. So you see I don't need, require any C in or C out. Now you could if you wanted to. There's nothing wrong with putting C ins, uh, excuse me, putting C ins here. So I could create uh, an integer x. I could C in x. And then I could set it to x. Um, but it's, it's not required as far as just running it through its paces to see if it's working. The key thing is never, ever, ever have any sort of C in or C out in the web counter, right? Because the web counter doesn't deal with input and output. It deals with managing a, a page counter. All right, with that, we will see you on uh, Thursday in lab and Friday.